Praise. No, no, no. no, no. Doing, it's just a level of yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm just going to just lightly like that. And then we're wrapping it up right now. Is that okay? Oh, that's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. okay. Sorry? Fuck off. Well, she. Sorry? Go. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, um, praise the Lord. Um, so we got the power in the name of Jesus. We got the power. cannot be defeated cause we got the power in the name of the Lord so we got the power in the name of Jesus we got the power in the name of the Lord don't separate not be defeated. We got the power in the name of the Lord. We got the power. So we got the power in the name of Jesus. We got the power in the name of the Lord. Don't separate Okay, guys. happening tonight. This is where the party's at. Let's get this party started, right? Let's get this party started quickly. We're going to have a Holy Ghost party here today. Hallelujah. Man, it's, it's, it's almost like, it's, it's almost like the, 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 the whole of Sydney is starting to to realize where the real clubs are, man. We're, we're sick and tired of, of, of going to clubs 
and getting drunk all day and it doesn't really do what we wanted it to do. Amen. We're sick and tired of going around trying to find a hoochie for the night when we can have, when we, when we can have eternal life forever. Amen. This is why we're here at Club Jesus. Amen. Now, there is no admission fee, it's free. There's no cover charge. And we got the best of the best people here today. We, 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 we got Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Yeah. We, 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 got the, we got the angels of the Lord. Come on, somebody. We got Michael and all the hosts of them. We got the saints. Come on, somebody. We got saints in the house. We got righteous people here. We got people from every walk of life here. Yeah. I know some people over there say, let's go to the dead club. This is where the club's at tonight. Yeah. You're shaking your head like there's a better place to be, but this is the place to be. Get right with Jesus. Get right with Jesus. Get right with Jesus. Get right with Jesus. Jesus is Jesus. Jesus is Jesus. Get right with Jesus. Get right with Jesus. Jesus is Jesus. King of Kings. Jesus. Lord of Lords. Jesus. Get right with Jesus. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. We can have fun. Now, there's a couple rappers here. Where's, where's my rapping friend? There we go. Come on, brother. Stand up on the, stand up on the stage right now. Get some rapping going on. Yes, if we can do some Bluetooth for you if you got some beats. You want some beats? Come on, there we go. You... My voice is gone too, brother. It's all good. You good? Oh, it's dogs here? Oh, it's dogs, dogs. Yo! Hallelujah! Oh, this is beautiful stuff, man. Wow, wow, wow. Praise God. Um, <laughs> oh, can you go YouTube? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then go, um, drop. Drop. By Timberland. Anyone, anyone, anyone have water, eh? Can I sip on salt, lad? Or any Western Sydney people in the house of war? Praise God. This is like the only thing that I've ever seen where all people, all different nationals, every area joins up together. Yeah. This one is about, this is Jesus culture. Amen. This is a Jesus revolution. Amen. This is a Western Sydney Jesus revolution. Amen. This is a Sydney Jesus revolution. Ashai! Yo. <laughs> Yo, check. Oh, can we go again? Sorry, sorry, sorry. I dropped. I missed the drop. I missed the drop. Can we go again? Sorry, boss. I'm a bit too hot. Yo. 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 Oh, sorry. We begin. Last time I promised in Jesus' name. When I'm stepping over the gang, chewing hairs on my sword. Hey. Any demon that's supposed to get bored, spin away the authority that I gained from the Lord. I'm a soldier that I've run for the cause. You never see me street preaching a suit and a tie. Cheers, check his feet and caps, keep it flying. If you wanna find the boy, you don't really gotta try. 35 degrees, sun is on, and my soul. What's your neighbor waking up and see your black and start lifting? Saying records, it can take me for a big them shut the bubble slap, cast them out in an instant. Speaking tongues, warm made in my kitchen. Covered in the blood of Jesus' name, let me risk it. What you thinking that I'm soft, cause I'm Christian? Drop the secular to be instead of off the mission. Jeremiah 1 5 comes different. You must see me in my Yeezy slots. Go chain the cost back, be like Yeezy. God, present God in public and present God in night, present God in the morning and even in the meantime, kind of fuck each other, boy, way too much to lose, except Jesus, so you dare hit the snooze, God, give yourself a bomb, what are you actually going to use, cooking these feeds, just be where I keep two, ah, uh. yeah, yeah, it's 
step Jesus in the cross and you're actually going to lose life. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Hey, that's all I got, that's all I got. That's all hey. Hey, come on, come on, come on. Hey, 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 that's it. Hey, buy off it, come up on it on one day. Buy off it, come up on it on one day. Buy off it, come up on it on Judge me to come up on the land one day. Judge me to come up on the land. Want me tell him, say, fire up and come up on the land one day. Fire up and come up on the land. Say, fire up and come up on the land one day. Fire up and come up on the land. Babylon think them one, them not one over with. Them a know say, I can stand with your almighty. Them a come with them books and them chances of sorcery. Them a come with them guns and them immorality. Them a come with them counsel and immorality. Them a come with Antifa and everybody. But they can't stand in front of the almighty. With them body business and sexuality. Hey, we say, fire up and Any other rappers in the house? Come on, this is Club Jesus. Club Jesus in the house. Any other rappers? Come on. Where's all the rappers? Hey, hey, hey. Somebody just say, hey, 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 hey. Somebody say, somebody say, hey, 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 hey. Sydney, make some noise for Jesus. Club Jesus in the house. If you don't know Jesus, listen, we can have fun without your wine, without your beer, without your Jack Daniels, because we got the most high. We got a high bigger than your cocaine. We got the almighty, the most high. Hallelujah. Can somebody, can somebody, can, can somebody, hey, can somebody praise the Lord? You got, I know you got more. Of raw priesthood, raw, raw priesthood, anyone that I knock, knock, somebody jump on, bro, surely. Knock, surely, anyone from raw priesthood, RPH in the building, come on. No, no, no. Surely, we've got hella rappers in the building. Don't be shy now, this is, this is not time to be shy for Jesus. There we go. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, ho! Come in, I cheat the devil in the head with a gun. No, I don't. I praise the Lord with the sword. I cut him in the throat. I step on his head. That's a serpent. Praise to the Lord above. Come up on here. I ain't got no gun. But what I do got is the spirit. Spirit, spirit. Lord, it's the spirit. Put your hands up. Hey, 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 hey. Call me a bigot. He called me a bigot. I'm not a bigot. I'm crazy for it. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Good versus a battle with evil. Come up to here and I'll have your sins forgiven. Forgiven. I'm the glory to the God, the Father. Praise to the Father. Praise to the Son. Come up on here. I'll take you one on one like the devil with the Father in heaven. Forgive me in my sins. I came here with my sisters and with my mother. Brethren. Hey, 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 hey. I'm a believer. In the name of Jesus, somebody get crazy in the stands. Put up your hand like you just don't care, like you just don't care. Hey, from Sydney to Melbourne, back to Brisbane, back to Toronto. I don't really give up because of my flow. Flow for the Father in heaven. His name is Jesus. Name no greater. I am Jaira, the greatest thing. Hey, hey, ho, 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 Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 praise the Lord, hallelujah. Hey, hey, come on somebody, who's a freestyler in the house? Come on, come on, here we go. We got somebody coming up, bringing up, there we go. Hey, club Jesus in the house, free admission, free admission. Come on to the club right here, right here. Come on, stand up, stand up, stand up. Take the mic, take the mic, take the mic. Hey, stand up, stand up. Yeah. Yeah, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Lord told me this is the way to go. Walk out and wait on the soul for a pot of gold. No longer petty dough, put him on the pedestal. No longer feel the car. So, uh, J A E S U S, Jesus, save me from my sin. He can do it for you too. 
But you know what? Let's play some more wherever we are! Tell me this is the way to go. Lord, tell me this is the way to go. Oxford Street, thought they have a hearse. I didn't know they have to rehearse. But here I am, I showed the kingdom of God. I'm not a freestyler, but my style ain't free. But Jesus Christ, you know he's free indeed. Yeah! Hey, 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 go, go, Shana. Go, 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 go. Hey, hey, hey. Unsaved, it's your birthday. Unsaved, today could be your birthday. Unsaved, it could be your birthday. You can be born again, today it's your birthday. Get right with Jesus, it's your birthday. You can trust in Jesus, it's your birthday. Give your life to Jesus Christ, it'll be your birthday. You can be born again, it's your birthday. You see, Jesus Christ died on the cross. Everybody's looking at me like the cross, but I understand that Jesus is the man. He came from here and went to Japan. He was preaching the gospel every single place. I'm here to tell you right up in your face that there's only one that saves. It's Jesus, so Jesus, 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 Jesus. We need another freestyle up in the house. Come on, come on. Hey, come on, somebody. Where's the freestylers? We're 200 people. We, we, we know what it's like to be like these people here. Let's give them a taste of Holy Ghost touching the beats. Come on, somebody. Anybody? There we go, there we go, in the house, hey, hey, Jesus in the house, somebody say Jesus in the house, Jesus in the house, Jesus in the house, hey, hey, somebody's Jesus in the house, Jesus in the house, Jesus in the house, hey, somebody say Jesus in the house, Jesus in the house, Jesus in the house, he came out to say, say Jesus in the house, he came to save you, Jesus in the house, I mean, I'm here to tell you, Jesus in the house, you wanna go clubbing? Jesus in the house. The best club to be is Jesus in the house. You can get saved when Jesus in the house. You can get filled with the Holy Ghost, Jesus. It's all about Jesus, all about Jesus, got Jesus in the house. Come on, somebody. Hey, 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 say, it's Jesus, it's Jesus, it's Jesus, it's Jesus, it's Jesus, cussing out demons, hey, holy, he freed me from the old me, hey, come on, somebody praise him, hey, come on, somebody praise him, put your hands up, hands up, just bump it for Jesus right now, hey, say Jesus, say Jesus, say Christ, say Christ, Hey, Jesus set me free. Let me tell you that he's free indeed. Hey! Let's go. Somebody praise Jesus right now. Hey! Jesus in the house. Jesus in the house. Jesus in the house. Say Jesus in the house. Jesus in the house. I can't hear you. Come on. Hey, Jesus in the house. Jesus in the house. Jesus in the house. Hey, 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 hey. Any singers? Oh, you got you got a rap. Oh no, you got. Okay, then, now there's some R&B singers or some soul singers in the house. So you got a freestyle a song. Come on, somebody. You want me to put the Jamaican? You want to fire her from the line? a second everybody somebody just praise the Lord now, all of this was 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 not planned at all hallelujah but, but God is doing something in this area for those of you that are passing by wondering what what kind of event this is this is an event for everybody it's an inclusive event it's it's a free club amen and I, I'm here to tell you today listen this club is better than every single club I walk by. Yeah. The good thing is it's free. And what kind of club is this? This is a Holy Ghost club. Yeah. And this club gives you access to everything good. 
You want a better relationship? You can come to this club. We're, we're all about the best kind of relationships. You want the best sex? Listen to me. It's all in this club. Why? Because the best sex is with holy sex. When you get married, you get a husband and a wife, and you can enjoy yourselves for the rest of your life. The sex that you get in here, your, your wife ain't going to go off into sleep with Billy uh, and your next door neighbor because the ladies inside this place are faithful. You're a lady walking by. Listen, you want a good relationship? The men inside of here will love you just like Christ. They'll die for you. That's these, this is the club that you need to belong to. Some of y'all want to get laid tonight? Yeah, we, we can lay down your sin at, at the grave today. And you can be born again. <laughs> Everything that you want to get there is even better here. Listen, heaven's better than hell. I don't know about you. Heaven's better. That, that's what Club Jesus is all about. Club Jesus is a free club. You don't even have to pay. You can save your money. Listen, this is where everybody's at tonight. So we're going to hear the best performers ever. I don't know what kind of performers they All they got is records and CDs and, and pre-recorded MP3s. But here you get the live from the Holy Ghost filled people. Hallelujah. The best of the reggae. Hey, Amen. We got the best reggaes here. We got the best rappers here. We got the best singers. Where's my singers at? Where's my, come on somebody, let, let's, let's start the R&P. Where's my R&P singers? It, it says that we call it R&P because, because we're, not, we're not here to give you the blues, we're here to give you the praise. Rhythm and praise. Come on, come on, sir. Yes, yes, yes. What, what kind, so we got a performer? What kind of performer are you, a rapper? Singer, okay. So we're gonna give you, we're gonna give you a, 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 a nice beat, all right? What kind of, what kind of? Michael Jackson. Uh, yeah. What kind of Michael Jackson? Soul. No, I used to be a Michael Jackson. Okay, so we're gonna give you a. Uh, uh, Michael Jackson. We're gonna make it gospel. All right. I don't know how. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna freestyle something. All right. I wanna. I don't freestyle. <laughs> you're alive, everyone. Come on. I don't know how to freestyle. <laughs> Just go with the flow. Sarah takes it. That's the info the cell phone. We got you, we got you. No, but Dave, you better give him something slow like Michael Jackson. Yeah. That's his first yeah, that's 70s. Like you had to put rock, me on the spot. Rock with you. Yeah, 70s, Sorry? 70s. I want to rock with you. Rock with you, yeah? yeah. But, but, it, but, we're, but it's going to be gospel. All right? Yeah? At the beer store, the best value for beer is always near. All right, the performer's coming up. And I want you to listen to his lyrics. And we can ride the boogie. I want to rock with you, Jesus. Did you win today? I want to rock with you, Jesus. We're going to rock the night away. Out in the church. But God. I can't freestyle, man. This is. Oh, man. Let me sing along. Yeah, you sing along. Hey. I want to rock with Jesus all the time because he's always on my mind. I don't understand the time, but I'm here to tell you this is the time to get right with Jesus all the time. Because he's my life. He's better than a nickel and a dime. I'm here to tell you, you need to rock with Jesus all the time. I want to rock with you, oh, Jesus. We're going to rock the night away. Jesus, rock the night away. Give it up, give it up. All right. 
You know, all of these songs are always better when God's in it. Our life is better when God's in it. Do you know that this world is falling apart without God, but it always gets better? Look at all these people. How many of you came from a background of theft? I'm going to put up my hands. I, I was a thief. Now, how many of you like thieves robbing from your house? So already, God in your life made the world a better place. Now, how many of you were sleeping around and breaking people's hearts in the past? How many, how, how many of you like to have your heart broken? Put, put up your hand. So already, just don't aim it at me so they don't get the squeaks. Already, having God in your life is already better because now the cheating and the stealing and the robbing and all the stuff that ruined you and broke you is gone. Amen? How many of you had sexual addictions? You were struggling watching porn all day. Come on, be honest. Now, this is going to be a tough one because some of you are like, well, I like porn. <laughs> but, but if you were the person in a relationship with the person watching porn, how many of you would like that? Not many of us. So already, just by getting God in your life, the world became a better place. Just those three things should make you think to yourself, maybe I need God because I can be a better person. God represents everything good. God represents everything that's loving. God represents everything that's merciful. Everything that makes sense comes from God. So if you're here today and you're saying, well, I'm good without God, listen to you. You're just, you're just embracing a life that is... You're just, you're just embracing a life that's subpar to what we have. That's why we're here without the alcohol and we're partying. We're all happy. Yeah. I'm looking around. I see smiles on people's face. You see a lot of people walking into the clubs with frowns on their face. What is it about them and us that's different? We got Jesus. That's what's different. Now, there's somebody that was going to share a testimony, a story, a story. Did you want to share your story? Come here. It's my Jewish brother right here. He's got a story. He's got a story. Shalom, shalom. Okay. Uh, bear with me because I'm a little bit shy. <clears throat> so, on the 23rd of September, this my voice is going through singing for the Lord. Can I get a praise for Jesus anywhere? On the 23rd of September, 2013, I was sat down there on a table outside a cafe, having just been out on a Thursday, wondering why it was that I didn't turn up to work the next day. It was a Monday morning. I'd been gone for four days. I couldn't sniff anymore. I couldn't fit any more vodka down into my stomach. I was taking somebody else's prescription pills and asking them, why don't they work? Tell me what they are. And when they said, I'm not going to tell you, I don't know, I said, give me some more. I was in big trouble. I was in an apartment around the back here with a girl, and she fell down me like uh, one of those lizards with his claws just slid down the front of me. And as I looked down onto her, she was on her knees asking me for help. I had no help for her. Why? because I was no different. The only difference between me and her was she was on her knees. I had no Jesus in my life in that day. But when I came around from her apartment and I sat on that table over there, I asked for help. I said, I don't know what to do. If you're up there and you're listening, I'm ready. I said, I'm done. Can anybody here tell me they're done? Did they have that day? Is there anyone here that had that day? Put your hand up if you had that day. There are other people here walking past who probably think they're in that state of mind. But there is help. And the help came for me. One thing led to another. I ended up in a church. I got prayed over in Rockdale. And I was on the floor and I could not get up off the floor. I'd invited Jesus into my heart and he came and he struck me down. He took me. And I laid there. And I was there for about 25 minutes. The congregation were clearing up around me, clearing up the chairs, having a cup of tea, and I was still laying there with my hands up in the air like this in a dead cockroach position. I could not even move my arms and lower them. 25 minutes I was on the floor. 
and I'm wondering what's going on. I'm having a conversation with somebody, and then out of the blue, the word pride came what down. The Holy Spirit said, you're prideful, you're worried. You're worried about all the people in this room. You're thinking they're looking at you. Your problem is pride. Amen, preached up. And so what did I do? Well, I decided that that voice was correct. After 43 years of living a prideful life, I decided it was time to give in. And that's what salvation is about. It's about repentance. First, we have to forgive ourselves and ask God to forgive us for our sins. And I said to him, I'm, I'm ready, deliver me. And in that moment, a black mass left my body. Now, this is not the sort of thing, they talk about that in witchcraft and sorcery, you know, Galatians 5.22 business. Nah, this was God. God came in and he took the evil spirit out and he lifted it off me and it evaporated into the room. And what happened to me, it was like a marble tabletop had been lifted off of me. And I could breathe for the first time since my first memory at age three weeks old when somebody spoke to me. The first memory I had when I came into this world was the Holy Ghost spoke to me. An event happened. One day I might share that with you. But the voice said, you're here for that. It was a person showing unkindness. Kindness is all we need, apart from love, of course. Coming back to what happened, I went on a roller coaster, getting into the Word. Bearing in mind I come from England, I've been in many churches, thousands of churches across the world. Nobody ever offered me the gospel. Can you imagine that? Going into a church and I never got offered the gospel. Looking for it, fighting for it, waiting. Come and get me, God. Come and get me. I even challenged God. I said, if you want me, you're going to have to come and get me. I'm done coming in churches. And that's how I ended up in this church in Rockdale, on the floor with a pride being lifted from me. Because God came and got me. And he will come and get you. It doesn't matter how low, how deep you go. You just got to give in and he'll come and get you. After I got into the Bible study and I started to say, okay, God, use me. What do you want me to do? Tell me where you want me to be. And there was a prayer ministry, an evangelist ministry in the church. And they said, we're going out. You're coming. That was the same day I prayed. And we came here. And we stood here, King's Cross, right here, wow. right here, wow. David, brother David, God bless you. Amen. We stood right here, and for four or five weeks, I kept coming back, and I was scared. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to approach people. The best I had was to hand out a track and say, Jesus loves you, brother. Jesus loves you, sister. And I stood at the other side of this crossing, and this side, and I got people as they came across, I never hassled anybody, I just waited my time. After the fifth week, me and my brothers were in a car traveling down here, and I said, uh, four, four of my brothers in the car with me. I said, brothers, I don't know if this is for me. I don't know if evangelism is for me. And my brother Bob, he said, we're going to pray for you now, brother. So he prayed, and he said, God, come into David's heart show him what to do it's not busy here now before they did a the whole you'll you remember before they changed the drinking laws right it was busy down here this is what it's like there were people everywhere it was packed the cars were packed everyone was coming up and down and this brother spotted me from right across the corner through my brother just locked eyes onto me and i locked eyes onto him and he never took his eyes off me and he walked a straight line from there to where i stood there and everything parted like the Red Sea for Moses. He just walked straight through the traffic, through the people, uninterrupted. And he came up to me this close. And he said, brother, help me. He was drunk. He was slurring. He was swaying. He was in big trouble. But he had something in him. He had the ability to realize he'd reached the bottom. He had nowhere else to go. And in that moment, my brothers looked at me and they said, we all knew it was him, the man that God sent. God sent that man to me so that I could stand here and tell you all that because God is capable of anything you ask him for. And that's what this is about. 
I am just a servant of God if I'm very blessed. And if there's anything else left for me to do above and beyond that, well then, wow, I've won the lottery a million times over. You are all blessed. I love you all. And Jesus is here to save anybody that needs saving today. And if that's you and if you're listening, you come over here and make yourself known because there is salvation here today. Can I get a glory for God? Wow, wow, wow. You, you heard the man. He's, he came from a mighty long way. And a lot of you people are just the same and all you need to do is take that step and there's a couple other people and there's a sister that was singing our levite she has one of our microphones on her on her cord there so just uh pass it by when you get a chance but there's somebody here that wants to share a message here and i'm just going to call them up whoever that is hallelujah and uh just share because there's a few street preachers here there's evangelists here we go we got the drummer here he has a story Amen. This is a move of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to read some scripture because it's the word of God that is sharper than a double-edged sword. Isn't that right? And I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful to God that Pastor David came to Australia to encourage us. But when Pastor David goes back, what are we going to do? Turn to the word of God, trust in the Lord, pray, worship, and continue to grow in the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, so let me read. Uh, I'm going to read from Psalm 40. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, it says, It is written, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the Maori clay, Maori clay. And he set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. He has put a new song in my Hallelujah. mouth. Hallelujah. Yeah. Somebody say, Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. All right. That's the song. We're going to sing Jesus from now until eternity. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, where are we up to? <laughs> All right. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear. That's fear the Lord. And will trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust and does not respect the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord, my, many, O Lord, my God, are your wonderful works, which you have done. And your thoughts towards us cannot be recounted to you in order. Amen? Amen. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Love the tambourine there. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. My ears you have opened. Amen. We can hear the voice of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Burnt offering and sin offering you did not require. Then I said, Behold, I come in the scroll of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do your will. Who wants to do the will of God today? Amen. Yes? Amen. Oh, sorry, the phone's going off. Right? Oh, my God. And your law is within my heart. That's the word of God. Amen. Amen. Read the scriptures. Get it in your heart. Get it in your soul. And speak it. When you declare the word of God, there is power. Amen? Amen. Okay. I have proclaimed the good news of righteousness in the great assembly. Indeed, I do not restrain my lips. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, you yourself know. I want to pray. Father God, I thank you that you lifted every single person out of the Maori clay, Lord. You lifted us out of that slimy pit, Lord God. The depression, the anxiety, Lord God. The hopelessness, the despair, Father God. Lord, you picked us up in Jesus' name and you raised us up. Hallelujah. Lord God, you are the same yesterday. You are the same today. You are the same forever. And we love you, God. And you are worthy, God. You are holy, God. And this country, this nation belongs to Jesus. 
Jesus. Hallelujah. Let, let everyone come to, the, to know the reality and the love of Jesus. Let everyone come. This, is, this message is a message of hope for everybody. That every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Amen. There's a sister here. Come, sister. Hurry up. Hurry up. Praise, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. What a night. What an interesting night. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I, I just want to ask a question. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Um, uh, be, when she, uh, be, she's going to share something, but I want to see the hands of those who have never publicly shared the gospel. Be honest. Be honest. Put up your hand. Be honest. It's okay. Okay, see, yeah, there's a lot more of you. Keep your hand up. If you've never been on a microphone, publicly shared the gospel. Okay. Okay. I see a few of you because I'm going to call a few of you up next. Okay. David, I've never done this before, but it's really important that I come up, and I thank you very much for being in King's Cross. So I come up from a very traumatic life, unfortunately. Um, as a little girl, my mother actually was a prostitute, a drug addict, and a, um, an alcoholic. I was placed in a tour, into a children's home at the age of four. And mum actually used to bring us here as kids. Um, and this place was known for prostitutes. This place was known for, you know, we, we saw it tonight. You know, we saw the gay and lesbians. I don't have anything against them. You know, um, we've got to love them. Um, but something special that happened in um, King's Cross for me, and it's very sad, unfortunately, but my brother actually passed away at the fountain here. He was riddled with methylated spirits, and he was um, homeless. He had my, my mother, and he used to live with my mother, but they used to quite often fight. And so, you know, we, we walked along and we sang the separated song and we will not be separated. I've got him in my heart and I'm writing a book and this is the first time that I've actually stood up and said anything in front of every, anybody. But, you know, God gives me the courageous. God gives me the boldness because I thought that I was in this world all by myself. But I look at each one of you and I hope that you realise that we are to love one another. Amen. Love is the most important thing. And I did not know about love until Jesus gave me that love. And now I know what love is, you know, and I'm just about to become a chaplain. I want to actually go out to the streets. I want to go out to the homeless, the domestic, whatever God, wherever God sends me. But, you know, from, from a, a girl that thought that I was going to be homeless because my brother was homeless, you know, it's just amazing. You know, God is so real and he, I have this passion because he's alive, you know. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, sir. Would you guys like to have a discussion here or? Amen. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. How are you? Are you guys just coming in? Uh, you heard us while we were walking. I see you have a wonderful camera there. You're not with us. You just, oh, okay. So what do you think about our gathering? Amen. Are you a believer in Jesus? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. And what about you, sir? Are you, believe, are you a believer in, is he shy? Well, you are, are you a believer in Jesus? Yeah? You've trusted in Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Amen. Amen. All right, all right. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. There's a lot of people walking on by, and, and uh, some people are here because they watched us online. They heard about us. They were walking on by. Some people... Um, are here with good intentions, bad intentions. But I'm here to tell you, whatever reason you're here, God loves you. Amen. God, Amen. God loves you so much. Amen. And if you're walking on by in this place, I want you to know today 
that the reason why we're walking is because everywhere we go, we want the nation to be healed. We want every one of you to have a better life. We don't want you to fall into the trap of depression and hopelessness. We don't want you to become so desperate and, and, and dark to the point where you take your life. We want you to come to the Lord Jesus Christ because he died so that you might have life. Every single person here today has accepted Christ in this, well, not every person in this circle because I don't know everybody, but most of us here have come from a dark background, a, a, a background of hurt and pain, lust and shame. But we realize that there's a God who has a better life for us. There is a better life. There is a way out of your shame. There is a way out of your lust and darkness and depression and hopelessness and suicidal tendencies. There is. There actually is. And, and some of the ambitions we have, the desires, the affections that we have inside of us that we, some of us uh, struggle with and some of us have just accepted as normal. I know some guys that uh, when they were very young, they were just very horny. They were, they were men that just wanted to sleep around with everything they could see. And um, it was, they just, they knew, I don't know, in the beginning they knew it was wrong, but they just embraced it because that was what they felt. Now, a lot of us go down that route. We just live by how we feel on the inside. And that feeling drives us to, to things that a lot of people might not accept. And some of us become so... Uh, so impassionate or so uh, engulfed in our affections and our lusts that we just start to say this is just how life is. I know a lot of guys like that where they're just womanizers and they just walk around and say, this is just how life is. This is how God made me. He made me to be a sexual person, so I'm going to be a sexual person. And, and so they just sleep. And, and I know you might think that maybe uh, that person could be right. I mean, if we're sexual beings, let's just have sex and everything will be all right. But, but everybody knows that even in sex, there are some rules. No one's going to endorse rape because they know that that's a forceful way of having sex. No one's going to want to have sex in such a way that is um, damaging to someone else's psyche. And now maybe you have a fetish of being a freak and you want to somehow be in pain. But but pain can go too far. Pain could end up hurting people and bringing people to the grave and causing uh, bigger problems in someone's life. And so somewhere along the line, we have to acknowledge that there are some boundaries, there are some rules. And we can say, well, everybody has their own boundaries. Absolutely right. I mean, everybody can, can decide what they want to do. But, but when we look at it as a, as a collective community, things we want to pass down to the next generation, None of us would say, you know, it's okay, we want our daughter to, to become a, a, a sadistic person, to be beat up by her boyfriend or girlfriend. No one, wa no one wishes that because we know that that kind of life is destructive. That doesn't bring anybody anywhere closer to the things that would produce a success or bring happiness. It's a life of depravity and bondage. And some people have gotten used to bondage because they've been abused as a child, and that's all they know. Some some people, that's all they can get. They get abuse, so they start to accept it. People that have been rejected all of their lives, they end up accepting any man's uh, 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 sexual desires, even though they don't love them. They, they just say to themselves, this is all I can get. And some of you have been down that road before. Some of you are walking down that road now where you've just accepted anything that comes your way. I'm here to tell you today that God has something better for your life. God has something better for your life. This is why the Word of God is here. It gives us patterns of living. It gives us a way that is better than the destructive tendencies of this world. And it does take some knowledge and faith to understand that. It does take some uh, uh, conviction in the heart. And that's why we're here. We're here to open up the eyes of the blind by the grace of God and help you to see that there is a better path to choose. 
And that path is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is a person that represents everything good. His life was everything good. His spirit gives you a different feeling. When you get the spirit of the Lord inside of you, your depression will turn into joy. Your, your anger will turn into love. Your unforgiveness will turn into mercy. Your, every, your, every part of your being, you'll start to see life in a different way. You'll have the capacity to endure things that you couldn't endure before. You'll be able to look up instead of look down. You'll be able to look forward instead of look back because God will deal with all of your insecurities. He will give you security. He will protect you when everything seems to be dark around you. This is why believers in Jesus Christ are able to walk through fires and stare at our enemies and be confident in all circumstances because we have God on our side. The Most High is our strength. He is our refuge. He is our shield and and buckler this is why we preach because we want you to have the same in your life we want you to have the Lord in your life how can having somebody in your life make a change in your life well you know and I know that if you have a good counselor he can bring positivity in your life we know that if we have a good doctor he can instruct us in what kind of things to put in our body and what kind of medication to take. So that means that we can have people in our lives that can make our lives better. Having a good friend is like having someone to put our, uh, uh, put our head on and, and lean on their shoulder in tough times. We have someone to call on the phone and their words and their open ears gives us comfort and solace in our life. So what can a person do? A lot that a person can do. And the best thing that a person like Jesus can do is give you everlasting life. Amen. The Bible says, or Jesus said in the word of God that the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but he has come that you might have life. Now you might be saying there's a difference between a person that I know and an invisible person that I have not seen. But I'm here to tell you today, every person that is educated learns from people that they have not seen. We learn from the scholars that died. We learn from scientists that died, scientists that we'll never meet. Their words give us knowledge and understanding that allows us to be the people that we are today so you might not see Jesus but his words are still living they are still active and they are still able to lift up the conscience and soul of man and the amazing thing about his words is that his words because they're everlasting and they're righteous uh, produces something inside of you and triggers a reaction that allows you to overcome all of your temptations and struggles his word is spirit in fact every word that we speak is spirit it's spiritual in origin it's spiritual in being and the words of God have the highest frequency there are different frequencies in this world there are frequencies that bring depression and there's frequencies that lift us and give us joy when somebody laughs we start to smile when somebody's frowning we start to frown so that tells me that just by the very frequencies of man we can change our mood but the frequencies of God are the most high frequencies they're the frequencies that are beyond everything in this world in fact every circumstance in this world can be overcome by the frequency of the word of the living God the spirit of the living God is the highest frequency so if you want to rise above your circumstances, you need the words of God, which will lift you beyond the grave. This frequency that was within Jesus Christ rose his body from the grave was able to overcome sickness. This frequency, this word, they're starting to tap into frequencies. In fact, in, in hospitals, they're starting to deal with frequencies. There's certain scientific uh, health systems that they play certain frequencies, even music. They have music therapy. It's a frequency. It's something that does something in the mind and the spirit and the mental. In fact, you go on the internet, you want to have a good sleep. You can turn on sleeping music and they have certain frequencies that you can sleep within three minutes. 
I don't know what's on those frequencies, but there's something about the words and the, the spiritual realm that we're starting to understand. And so if you can read the word of God and you can understand the words of God, then you can understand that there are words that are heavenly in origin. And there are words that are satanic in origin. And the satanic words, whether you say you believe in God or not, you must believe in frequencies. You must believe in the unseen because even the frequencies that we have are unseen. So there are unseen things happening all around us. So whether you want to call him God or you want to call him the highest frequency, there is a high and a low frequency. There's a bass and there's trebles and there's high. There's mids and there's highs and there's lows. And every musical style brings about a certain emotion. That's why when you want to dance, you listen to fast music. And if you want to be in romantic you uh, dance, you listen to slow music. When you want to focus, you listen to Beethoven and symphonies. And when you want to get some uh, emotions going and you want to start moving fast, you listen to the hard kind of music, the quick music, the, the funk music. When you want to get your groove on, you listen to soul music. What is it about? all of these different styles that give you a different reaction this is showing you that there's a spiritual thing behind music there's a spiritual thing behind words this is why we preach and this is why Jesus Christ spoke the words of the almighty God so that you can be lifted up from your pit God wants to lift you up from the grave what grave are you in today what problem? Hallelujah. You may have pressed the button. That's okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What problem are you in today? You see, you're in a problem. You need a new frequency. You need to switch the channel in your life. When we look at the FM, AM dial, a lot of us don't go on the radio anymore, but it's all frequency. It's all a channel. Some of you are channeling in demons inside of your life. You've turned on a certain channel and certain energies and frequencies are coming inside of you. And that's why you're vibing in a certain way and you're moving in a certain way. And the things that I say don't sit right with you because the frequency and the channel that you're on is causing you to be possessed and oppressed and, uh, and, and brainwashed into a certain way. But what has your frequency done? done for you lately I don't know which songwriter said what have we done for you lately dun, 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 dun. Ooh, yeah <laughs> I don't know what your frequency has done for you but I can tell you what Jesus has done for me Amen. what has he done for me lately he saved me dun, 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 dun. All of these things, man, it's twisting the things of God. You see, anytime you're doing sin, living in sin and patterns of sin, all you're doing is distorting what God really wants to do inside of your life. He wants you to be lifted rather than uh, uh, be brought down. And so when we preach here today for whoever you are, I'm here to tell you today, that God is speaking hope into your life. He's prophesying life into your soul. He's, he's declaring in the atmosphere that there is an answer to your problems. And so if you're here today, whether you were walking with us or you're listening on the corner, I want you to know today that there is an answer to your problems. And his name, the frequency, is spelt in a name, Jesus, J-E-S-U-S. Type that in on YouTube and see what comes up. Listen to that name of Jesus over and over. That is the name given among men whereby we must be saved. It's the name of Jesus. And at that name, every frequency, every problem, every circumstance, every demon must bow. That's why we proclaim the name of Jesus Christ because that problem needs to go. That sickness needs to go. That depression needs to go. That, that damnation in your soul, that condemnation, that unforgiveness, that bitterness needs to go from your life today. 
if you would give Jesus that frequency of the Lord, the Holy Ghost, a chance in your life. If you are being drawn to this place today, you might be in this crowd and you might be an infiltrator. You might be somebody that's just wondering, but I'm here to tell you today, God was the one that brought you here, not your infiltration, not your, uh, uh, your speculation. It was God that sent his angels to wake you up this morning to walk you down this street so that you would be here and listen to this message and if your heart is being convicted all you need to do today is receive Christ in your life you need to receive him you got to stop resisting like the brother said this pride that was in his life pride was holding him back but he let go of his pride and here he is today here he is today. He's all the way over there holding some Bibles. If you want to receive a Bible, free Bible, I got saved by one of those Bibles. You can get saved today. If you're here today and you're not saved, why don't you give your life to Jesus Christ? Whoever you are coming out of the hotel, Potts Point Hotel. Maybe you're walking down the street. Maybe you're listening on the other side of the corner. Maybe you're too ashamed to come into this crowd because you don't know anybody. Whoever you are today, just call on the name of the Lord. You may have been suicidal. Your girlfriend broke up with you. Your boyfriend left you. Maybe you're just looking for somebody and you want love tonight. And so you're thinking, maybe if I go to the strip club. They said this was the red light district. I don't see any prostitutes, but you might know something I don't know. But I'm here to tell you today, you can get some love from God today. You don't need a prostitute to fill your void. It's not going to help you. She might come home with you for the hour, but she's paid by the hour. Jesus Christ will stay with you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you don't have to pay $100 an hour. You can get it for free. His name is Jesus. Call on the name of the Lord. He paid the sin debt. He did it all for you. His blood was shed for you. He loves you. He loves you. Hallelujah. Have you accepted Jesus, sir? Amen. God bless you. Give me a high five. Amen. Come on. He's accepted Jesus. I've been chasing and dog, not the devil. Jesus helped you out. People on the street and the people who got no house to live. I said on the news like a couple of weeks ago, I see eight people died out of the seas, the big building didn't come down, right? And killed 50,000 people in the building and two, two, two alive. And this woman, old woman, and this, and over there, and a little, little girl and I lost her, her mum and dad they're here, not here, overseas, and lost her little girl, lost the mother lost her little girl. And then the little girl died. And she, I can tell you what now is about the story. How do you live? Uh, he loves Jesus. You love Jesus, right? Yeah, yeah. Amen. He, he's and, 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 and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not really upset. I help people on the street too. I know people don't know how to live. One day, this woman, that, um, this man come out of me, right? I had sent the station on my own. No one knew for him. He said, Tom, you help me, please. Why? I don't know how to live. Why? He said, that, that, she says, I'm on the, on the bed. He said, you know, I'm on the bed. I burnt it, and the pillar is really cold. I said, come on, get up. Jesus told you. What? Jesus. You need help for you. What? And, and I said, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus died for you. Get up. Jesus died for you. Amen. Is there anybody else here that would like to share a testimony? So just so you know, anytime the mic is in the same direction, it's going to... Amen. Anybody would like to share a testimony? Because we're getting... Amen. Brother? Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Good to see you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're, we're about to wrap it up because of time, because we got a big baptism tomorrow. 
Amen. How many of you guys are coming to the baptism, the beach tomorrow? We're going to have a good time at the beach. Hopefully it's a nice night. Amen. But I want to call somebody up that, I mean, this is a, a, a safe place. Somebody that's never shared anything on a microphone. Even if it's a, this, I'm, I'm stretching you today. Even if it's a praise the Lord and hallelujah. Even if it's Jesus died for you. Amen. Hallelujah. And I saw a couple of hands and I'm just going to just, there we go. Come on, come on. There we go. Are uh, you tall, brother? Can I stand up there? Yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm just so grateful that, you know, he's uh, paid the price to save a sinner like me. Just want to say, you know, to my daughters and my son at home, Jesus Christ loves you girls, loves you, my son. And, you know, through him, we can make it home to him. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Let's go. Hallelujah. Hey man, that wasn't that bad. We need we need a few people, man. Come on, who has never publicly shared the gospel? This is God is releasing you in the evangelistic anointing. When you when you touch this uh, this, this 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 evangelistic mic, God is gonna start raising you up. He's gonna start using you. God is good Amen. all the time. Amen. Amen. Um, hey guys, my name is Pippa. Um, I just turned 30. Um, I gave my life to the Lord this year. I got baptized this year. The restoration he has brought to my home, my husband, my children. Like, you know, if I was to die today, I know that I'm saved, that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. You know, I was... I was like these girls here, you know, like half dressed, like, you know, walking into the clubs like this, thinking it was so much fun. It was so cool, you know, just really filling myself up with a lot of alcohol and listening to such worldly music that makes you, you know, it really does with your mind. Like, yeah, I love this. I love this sin. Like I, I, that's me. And, um, you know, it, I'm just so grateful that to, to have a seed planted in me that has come into fruition today that I can save my family. Um, and, you know, it's my first time uh, sharing my testimony. God is good. There you go. God bless you. You know, uh, you know one of the easy secrets to realize is that uh, we just have to worship God. It's not about you. So... If you're here and you're like nervous, nervous is basically focusing on you and what people have to say. And that means that the praise of man is more important to you. I know that sounds kind of rough, but that's really what it is. It's just pride. It's just ego and pride that doesn't make people share the gospel. And once you accept what this veteran in the uh, faith is telling you, then you realize that evangelism is actually not even that hard. Sharing your testimony, the glory of the Lord, is not even that bad. Once you just get outside of this, I need the praise of man. Yeah. What can they do for you? Like, why do you care so much what I think of you or somebody else thinks of you? What, what do they have to... Are they going to bring you to heaven? Or are they, do they make your life better or worse? And even if, even if they think you're crazy... Why does that matter to you? People think I'm crazy all the time. They thought Jesus was crazy. So why do you care so much about the opinions of man? Why don't you start caring more about the opinions of God? You know what God thinks of you when you share about him? He's happy. The angels of God are rejoicing. He can, you're confessed before the Father every time you confess Christ before man. That's what God thinks of you. He, 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 he likes, he, 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 you're, you're, you're like, you're cool with him. You're like, that's, that's my girl. That's my boy. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. He's walking by faith now. That, he's my crew right now. So, that, so I'd rather start thinking like that than to worry about what other people say. And that's one of the easiest ways to get out of your hurdle is just to acknowledge what it is. It's called pride. And pride comes before destruction. The proud will never inherit the kingdom of God. So that just shows you the standard of Christianity that is the biblical standard. When you're walking in pride, whether it's pride in the thing, because it's, it's pride money, everybody's proud about things, 
that is not proud about Christ is sexual. That's pride. That's one kind of pride. Another type of pride is when you're just you're not you're not willing to receive correction. That's pride. And there's another type of pride when when you have this ego where where you're looking at the the, the praise of man. All of these kinds of pride separates you. The pride of life is separates you from the love of God. And so you get a, you got to break out of that. And once you break out of that, you you automatically become an evangelist. It's it's very easy now. Now it's like you're a, you're a real fisherman. You can't be a fisher of men till you break out of your pride. And so is anybody re, you know willing to break out of their pride today? I don't want to force anybody. Come come. Well, praise Jesus. My name is Janet. I've heard so many fantastic testimonies over the evenings. And sometimes you wonder, God, all these testimonies, how do you, how do you uh, share your testimony when yours is just a very plain testimony, right? But I want to tell you that Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me. And he called us regardless. I come from a Buddhist, Taoist background. Um, I have two, I, my, I, my father passed away when I was very young. I have two brothers who are very, very committed into our religion. And I never know, quite know at what point God calls me, but he never left me alone. Because uh, when one of my relatives, my dear relative died, I was in my teenage at that time. And in our tradition, on the wake, they have a lot of monks and a lot of nuns that did a lot of praying and chanting and so on. And at the end of the process, they, because they believe in reincarnation, so at the end of it, they told us what this relative will be reincarnated into. And it shocked me, and I said, oh, how can this person be reincarnated into an animal? How could you, how could you a person that I reckon as a loving mother, a, a beautiful wife, a good daughter-in-law, you know, a, 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 a failure daughter and sister and, and all those to her family. How could this person be reincarnated into an animal? What sort of God is this? That one has to go through hell and be reincarnated again and again and again to receive life. But God is good. And at that point, I say, I don't know, I need a God of love. I need a God of love. And God hears our every prayer because He answered that. He answered that. I don't have any professional skill. I was, God gave me a chance to, to get a qualification that allows me to come to Australia, to migrate to Australia based on my skill. He opened the doors for me to get a job that gave me the experience that Australia needed so that I could get a, I could migrate here. And on the day that I received the immigration letter from Australia, you know what I heard? I opened the letter, I told my mum, I have my approval. I heard this wife saying that, now you can go to church. Amen. Amen. I don't even know this God. And I'm, I'm ashamed to say, even with that, when I came to Australia the first year, I did nothing. I was enjoying myself because I was young. I was, I was having fun as a single person. Nothing, nothing bad. Okay. okay. I was just going to, to explore this country. And one day, when I came back from work, a year later, I found a track in the letterbox. It says... We are a church here doing Bible study, and if you like to know more, call us. And I thought, okay, I better do that. <laughs> and that's how he brought me into his kingdom. Praise God. He never leave you. He has marked you. He has your name in his book, and he will call you. I'll share another short testimony, okay? Many years later, after I've come to Christ, my parents haven't come to Christ yet. My mom. And one day... When I was walking past, this is when I went home to visit, okay? Because I was already living here, but my family was still living in uh, uh, my, my native country. I walked past my mom and I saw my mom bowing her head on, banging her head on the ground, knocking and knocking and praying. And I walked past and I said, Lord, 
She is a good worshiper if you can make her yours. And God, to His praise and glory, brought my mom into His kingdom Amen. when she was in her 80s. All glory and praises to God. He knows you. Even in your faintness, with your faintness cry, your faintness groan, the Bible says that He hears every cry and He hears every groan of yours. So just cry out to Him and He will call you and draw you home. To Jesus, we give all the praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now there's a few people coming, lining up. I don't know who. I think, I think it was her first, and then, uh, and then we'll get we'll get to everybody. Okay, come on up. Thank you. Oh, I am. Hi everyone. I'm Keisha. I'm from Toronto. Uh, I've been here for seven years um, on my own, actually. So I don't have any family here. So, um, yeah, it's been an interesting journey, and um, from me being on my own and through all of my trials and tribulations that I've been through, that's what has pushed me to find God. It's in the valleys where you really meet Him. And um, I thank God for evangelists and uh, street work, because that's what's actually um, been my church for the longest while before I've actually found a church. Um, I'm now in a church, a Baptist church. It's open Bible, um, sound doctrine, which is great. Uh, but it's, um, yeah, I've, so the point of all this is just um, turn to God. He's real. Um, sometimes people are down, and, um, and that's the best time uh, to meet him is when you're down. Because when you're down, the only way up, it, sorry, the only way is up. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah. I'm now, um, I do feel like I'm in my purpose. Meeting Pastor David has been such a blessing. He's also from Toronto. Um, so I plan to help uh, with his ministry. And um, I just encourage everyone to get that confidence. And if you don't have it, just pray about it. And the Lord will just direct your path. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm not going to take much of your time, guys. But I just want to say that, um, yeah, I grew up here on these streets and in the eastern suburbs. Probably some of you did as well. And there's a lot of debate going on who is the king of the cross. Some people say it's John Abraham. But I'm here to declare tonight that the true King of the Cross is our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You see? See how easy it is to testify? God over that fear. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. Praise God. Praise God. Now, I'm just doing this because, you know, I've never spoken in front of a crowd in that. So, you know, got to do it eventually. But, you know, first, I just want to thank my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, for everyone here. For bringing David to Australia and, you know, for the grace upon his life, you know. I just want to encourage all the young ones, you know, like, don't be ashamed of the gospel. You know, a lot of, a lot of people these days just, like, you know, like, they're scared to come to the Lord because of what their friends will say and all that, you know. But I just want to let you know, and don't, don't worry about impressing others and all that, you know. Don't worry about trying to be a gangster and all that, you know. Because yeah. Jesus, Jesus died and he rose, you know. Yeah. And that's a real gangster, you know what I'm saying. So yeah. praise God, praise God. Yeah. You know, you know, it's so cool um, is, is that your generation, man, I wish I grew up in your generation in one way and not in another way. I mean, your generation, there's a lot of young people that are that are like, man, I want to follow Jesus. I'm looking in this crowd and I'm like, man, if, if, if this was my generation, it would have been a lot more easier. Back in my days, it was just like me and maybe a couple, handful, three, four people. You know, living for Jesus. So you guys are really fortunate in this generation. God is raising up a whole generation of amazing young people for Jesus. Now, you wanted to share something. Come on up. I don't want to stand up there because I might actually collapse. So sure, sure, <laughs> I'll sure. just stay down. <laughs> so I'm grateful to God for my life. I just want to say my name's Laura. Yeah, and um, I go way back. I'm 48 years of age. And I'd run these streets back in the day. Pacific Islanders were doing the running around. Um... And we were, there was a VIP club based directly in that corner. The building's gone now. But we were underage, 15, 16. We didn't need identification to go into the building. And we would go in there. Security was running the show at the time. Um, and we would drink alcohol and drug. And uh, I was in a big uh, train accident in King's Cross, uh, 15, 16. Peeled off my head. I ended up under the train. Nearly lost my life. Um, I was in a coma for two weeks, um, and from there, my life just plummeted. Um, I ended up on drugs, 
alcohol, prostitution, you name it, I did it. The homeless took me in. They housed me for quite a long time. Uh, I, my food came from uh, donations from takeaway restaurants that used to be in the areas, Newtown to name a place. Um, and I grew up there, Newtown, Redfern, Waterloo, where it was read up, and uh, King's Cross, of course. I'm just here to let you guys know that what God did for me in my life and changed, the way he changed my life, I can't even begin to fathom the wonders of the Lord. He has given me such grace. He has given me, he's been so faithful to me since I repented and gave my life to the Lord. I stand here, you know, to make a statement for the Lord. And I stand here to say, Jesus loves us all. I have noticed since I've started evangelism August last year, I think it was August, no, October, I think it was, doing um, evangelism in town hall. And I started uh, going there and um, I noticed also, like the pastor was sharing uh, just before, a lot of youth are coming to want to know the Lord. I believe we have come to a time of harvest and the harvest is ready. And uh, I believe in the youth that will be coming after us. And I believe us as the elderly, elder, much elder crowd are just here to pave the way for the younger ones. So um, heads, up, heads up and I just like for all the kids, all the youth that are in the neighbourhood at the moment and here tonight. And I just, you know, my prayers are with you. And I'm like, I perfectly know you are in God's hands and God will help you and be with you all the way. So I just uh, give all the praise and the glory to God. Amen. Come, brother. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Uh, so I got saved last year in April. Thank God. I just want to say thank you to the Lord Jesus Christ, to the Father, the uh, Holy Spirit. I was in high school and I was lost. I had no direction. I was an atheist. Uh, I, I started hanging with the wrong crowd. I was addicted to, to drugs and it, it sent me spiraling. I, I had psychosis. And I actually went to the psych ward around three times. And, and <clears throat> it was the first time God revealed himself to me. He said, you're a missionary. And I had no idea what a missionary was. I never read the Bible. And anyway, I continued. And I kept going back to the psych ward. I kept going back to drugs. And, um, but Lord Jesus Christ has set me free. Lord Jesus Christ has set me free. I placed my faith in him for salvation last year. And the Holy Spirit is guiding me, teaching me. All I want to do is live for God. Amen. You know, everyone in my life, all my friends or my fake friends, you know, they turn their back on me. They're living for the world. Even my own family, you know, they, they turn their back on me. But I, 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 I love them regardless, and I just want to love them with the love of God. And I just pray that everyone can, can, can uh, receive Christ and make Him the Lord of your life. He will give you everything. He will bear the weight of all your pain. I was suicidal. I was, I was depressed. I was anxious. I had issues, relationship issues. Now it's all gone. Thanks be to God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, Pastor David. Amen. Thank you, bro. Amen. Come on, brother. Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Raven. Um, I'm actually really nervous uh, <laughs> standing in front of you, everyone, but, um, you know, a little share, a little testimony, uh, you know, as a lot of people are out here that have been sharing their testimony, they said that being out here in King's Cross as well, you know, I was one of them people, um, I spent like five or six years of my life, you know, working, uh, among the strip clubs, you know, I was, I was partaking in the devil's work, bringing people in, you know. Um, leading them into temptation and that, that that was my job. I did it six days a week I did it for like six hours a day Taking people to to, to to brothels prostitution and I was lost. You know what I mean? Like I got From my childhood. I got led from uh, some bad people in my area I was doing like stuff like cocaine at the age of 13 in my family's garage when they're just in the lounge room They don't know what I'm doing. I was lost I lost my I lost my virginity to a prostitute, you know what I mean? So it's man, it's really tough. I'm struggling, but you know, leading into like uh, gang violence and drug dealing, 
on some serious drugs, had a daughter. No, I had, I had, I had no relationship with her, and the baby mom at the time. And she's sending me videos of my daughter looking out in the window looking for me. And I'm out here, lost. But you know, Jesus changed my story. Now I praise God. You know, I'm joining all these panels online. I'm just trying to conversate with my brothers and sisters, trying to learn the gospel. You know, I, I, I just gave my life to Jesus Christ four months ago. I got baptized one month ago. You know, um, man, just being here, seeing this movement really, um, really empowers me. And I hope that you guys, you know, whoever isn't brave or, you know, they might be afraid, you know, just let the Holy Spirit lead you to stand here. And um, man, you know, all glory to God. So like, I'd like to end it like this. All right. All my brothers and sisters. I like to end this all with the prayer. And if someone needs Jesus Christ inside your life, then the time is right. Please bow your head. Yes. Let me say it. Dear Father, I confess my sins and ask for forgiveness. And let the world be my witness. As I believe you died on the cross and God sacrificed his only son for us. Three years that you ministered and look at everything that you had done for us. I can't ignore it. I stand here in front of you with my heart open. Please, Lord, enter my life because there's many times that my heart's been broken. Help me walk in the path as an empty vessel for the Holy Spirit. Used to head out to the cross and part, taking party. Now I'm free for sin and I know you did it. Yeah. Learning the word and I'm learning my lessons. Hallelujah. Every day now I'm just counting my blessings. Yeah. I love you, my Lord, and I say it again. And if you all agree, let me hear you say, Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God is good. Let's get it. Praise. No, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. I'm just going to just lightly like that. And then we're wrapping it up right now. Is that okay? Oh, that's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. okay. We're actually wrapping. We're actually over time right now. So so praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. We had a we had a really good night, didn't we? Amen. Well, praise the Lord. We're over time anyway. We were here till 12 because of the lateness in the morning. So it's, it's not, not her fault. It's just... Just, I guess, the resident. She's actually okay with what we're doing. So give it up for the police officer. Amen. Sorry? Fuck off. Well, she... Sorry? Go. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, um, praise the Lord. Um, no. Praise the Lord, everybody. When I see hateful people, it makes me want to preach more. But, but anyway, um, we were here. We were supposed to be here for until 12 o'clock. And it's club district. It's club district. So if somebody's, if somebody's worried, actually, you know what? Hold on a sec. Check, check. So we're within reason anyway. So I was just being polite anyway. But, you know, you're in a club district and clubs. I don't know. What time does clubs usually end? Around 2, 3? Right, right, right. On a club district, on a, on a sidewalk, you know you're going to hear blaring music and stuff like that. But nonetheless, we were here till 12. We're supposed to be here till 12. We got a baptism in the morning. I know I got to wake up early. So Jesus is Lord. We know that. And so we're going to pray and end off today, and um, I hope to see you guys tomorrow at the beach. So whatever the uh, address is, I'm going to just let you know what the address is. Um, we're going to be meeting at tomorrow um, the Bathing Pavilion at Brighton LaSanne's Beach. So we're going to be there from 11 a.m. The baptism is going to happen. And we're going to evangelize there throughout the afternoon. So uh, until 5. Um, after that, we're not doing anything. Um, and then back on Monday, we're going to be at the Sydney Opera House and having a fellowship in the night. And then Tuesday as well. So we're going to close off in prayer today. It was a good night. A lot of seeds were planted. Amen. Hallelujah. 
this is, I guess, the red light district. I didn't see any red lights, but, but you know what? We had some good discussions. We had a good time. We, the, Lord, the Lord moved in this place, and some of you were released and got a chance to, to minister. So tomorrow we're going to continue on. We're going to do some prayers for deliverance tomorrow and, 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 and things of, of that sort, as well as baptism at the beach. So it's going to be a powerful day tomorrow. So let's just go before the Lord and pray and just ask the Lord to bring us home safely. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I give you thanks. We give you thanks and praise for all that you have done tonight, for all the seeds that were planted. We pray for a harvest for those watching online. We pray, Lord God, that you would have inspired them, Lord, in Australia to give their lives to you, Lord, to surrender. We thank you for all those who have accepted Christ today. Father God, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you even for the loud music testifying that we know it's not the loudness, it's the gospel that's offending. So, Lord God, it's just confirming what it is. It's a spiritual battle. So, Father God, we just ask you, Lord God, to deliver these people that are afflicted by demons. Father God, afflicted, Lord, in their mind and soul. Father God, we pray. Lord God, for this district, Lord, for every person, Father God, that they would get set free. Father God, that even when they go home, they would think, why was I so upset with the gospel? And they would call on the name of the Lord and say, I'm a mess. I'm a hot mess, Lord. Help me, Father God. We pray for deliverance and salvation over this entire community and this city. Bring each one of us home safely. Lord God, send your angels around us. Cleanse us, O oh Lord. We thank you for all that you did today. And continue the work tomorrow and in Sydney, Lord, forevermore. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. And God's people said amen, amen. and amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. We're going to be headed out now. And uh, so I guess we'll see each other. Say, say God bless you to at least five people here. And uh, we will see everybody tomorrow. Amen. <laughs>